Hey everybody, 4 before Diesel Sundays. This one might come in handy for you one day. The pull start on the mower that was free that I picked up at the local rubbish tip about 10 years ago. It was looking pretty good then, actually. That's why I picked it up. The guy told me, mate, there's a mower there. It's awesome. Grab that because I brought a wheelbarrow. And he said, you know, uh, he goes, what's wrong with that? And I said, it's got a flat tie. It was just one of those cheapy 50 buck things I was upgrading. And he goes, oh, and he's allowed to keep stuff. So I said, that's all right. I brought it for you. We're mates. So I chucked it in the back of his ute. And he said, and by the way, there's a good mower over there. So that's where this came from. I'm into not wasting stuff, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to fix this. It's pretty easy. You've got a few options, okay? So this is a Briggs & Stratton motor. Really awesome engine. They've been around for decades. Back in uh, secondary school, I used to rebuild these engines. I actually pulled one apart, sectionized it. That's cut sections out of it, painted it, put it back together. So a bit of an expert on the old Briggs & Stratton back in the day. But anyway, what we're doing now is a few different versions. Um, and there's a few different ways to fix this. You can, there's three bolts that hold this cover on. One there, and you'll find the other two that that easy to see. The older ones had a pull starter on the side, same thing. Had a couple of half inch bolts holding it on the side. This one's three bolts. Once you take those three bolts in, there's another one there. Right, I'll just get this pull cord. Keep the pull cord for now the way we're gonna do it. Mitch, can you grab that please? And once you've got those three bolts off, this whole thing just lifts off like that. And obviously I've lifted it off already. I've got the compressed air and blew all this loose dust and dirt and stuff out of the way because that's what you do while you're at it now. Let's take this to the bench and I'll show you how this works. Mitch, can you do me a favour? Put that down. I'm going to ask you to pull that pull cord in a minute, all right? Just gently pull it out. Go on, just gently. All right, so that's how it works. Now gently let it in. Don't let it go. Let it back in gently. Let it go. All right, so it's a spring-loaded contraption. Yeah, we'll call it a contraption. This... You can probably buy off eBay for 20 or 30 bucks. You can buy the whole thing if you're not into fixing stuff. You can actually order the genuine Briggs & Stratton pull cord from Bunnings for I think it was 13 or 14 bucks. But of course, I want to fix it now. So I looked in the uh, mower bits and pieces aisle and they didn't have any rope that was suitable, but I did go to the rope area because I was just going to buy some rope like that. That'd be smart, wouldn't it? So I got this small amount of rope for nearly four bucks. Bit of a rip-off, but guess what? It's called starter cord, and there's five metres of it, so there's probably enough to do three mowers. So talk to a mate, show them this video, and it might help you out one day. So all we've really got to do, I've obviously found the end, pulled it out, make sure I could get to that. That's cool. We're going to, um, what we're going to do, I haven't done this before, by the way. This is not something I've done. I've never done, I've got another mower with a broken cord. And what I do, I just wrap the rope around and pull it like the old, you know, on the old outboards, the old, you know, plan B when the battery's flat. Anyway, you can see the knot there. So all we've got to do, so I've found the end, put it through there. So that's out here now. We're going to pull it out. Just, we're going to count how many turns it is. And don't let it go fast. I'll let it go so that we can get the rope out, cut it to length and all that sort of thing. That's what we're going to do. We're going to untie this knot here. We're going to get the same length so that everything works. I'm going to assume we can get that little cap off there. Well, that looks like even a Briggs and Stratton cap handle anyway. I'm sure I'll figure that out, show you how it's done if it's anything complicated. But if it's, oh yeah, no, the cap doesn't come out. You can see the knot right there. So we just need to pull the cord to the side, stick that through. We've got our rope there. If anyone else has got the problem and you're in my area, happy to uh, give you the rest of the rope if you want to do that. You can see what's going to happen. We're going to put the rope in there. We're going to tie the knot. We're going to wrap it around. You know, all the things we've got to do to make it go just the way how it was before and then bolt this back on, three bolts. You can see one on each side, one, two, three, and they're 10 mil, it's even metric now. They used to be, uh, it was all seven sixteenths and half inch back in the model before this, whatever it was. But they're a really awesome engine. It's a Rover mower, so I'm gonna keep it going long as I can. Somebody says, ah, oh, you know, electric, yeah, well, you know, that's all right, but it's, again, it's a waste. If you throw away something that works, then it's a waste. I'll try and get another 10, 20 years out of this, might see me out. Plus I've got another old one. I've got an old Rover there. Um, with a Honda motor on it. It's an antique from the grandfather. It's awesome. It's got some grunt too. So anyway, let's get on with this. It's going to be hard to show you, but you get the gist of what we're going to do. So we're going to do it. I'm just putting some ideas out there. Three ways to replace it. Replace the whole thing by just the cord and replace the cord by just tying a knot or get your own rope and reuse the handle and the rest of it for about four bucks. That's what we're going to do. So this is the old cord. Hold it there. Don't move. This is the old cord, I just want to show you at the other end as well where it was also going to break. Hold it still, when I pull it, don't let it pull. That's it, beautiful. See at the end there? So it's all frayed and it's going to break there as well. So anyway, good time to replace it. So we've pulled, it's about four, was it four turns we just counted? Yeah, four. Four plus the length of rope that's not there. So we're going to say all together it's about five. But all right, because I, I, I need to know, hold it there nice and strong so when I pull it, it doesn't move. Thanks, mate. Um, when I pull it, Obviously, as you go, it gets tighter as you go, and I don't want it, so it gets to the end there, but I don't want to over, 
overstress it either. So that's why I want to have a rough idea of how many turns it is, whatever. All right, we're going to get this old rope out of here. Now, there's different ways to do things, but now what I've done, I've unwound it to what looked like all the way, and I've just pulled the cord back this way a little bit, and we're not even going to untie the nut. Not we're going to we're going to cut it. We're just going to cut it and get it off. So that's what we're going to do first. Okay, I'll just hold this for a minute. Now, you get those long nose pliers and stick it in there. Grab that. Just gently, gently pull it out. Don't pull it all the way. Is it coming out? Oh, is it that hard, is it? Okay, stop, stop. Don't pull it away. Show us how much is left. Okay, I'm just having a look. We could tie it on to pull it through. Let's risk it for the biscuit. We'll get it in there. So pull it all the way out. Happy days, all right? Beautiful. Yep, so this is the new cord, which has just passed it in the end. Okay, so you work out a way. There's going to be a way. You need to get a little pick tool or something yeah. to just hook it and pull it. What we want to do is feed it in there, allow a little bit of slack and just get this little hook tool to pick up the bit of rope and gently pull it through. And then we're going to tie a knot in it. Yep, that's a knot. Good work. Now slide the handle up all the way to the end, how it was before. No, the other way. <laughs> that's it. Let it go into where it's meant to go. Pull it. Give it a good pull. Give it a test. Make sure, yep, it's not going anywhere, is it? Let's have a look in there. Is it sitting in a good spot? Good enough, that'll do. Beautiful. Now, what we want to do, get the side cutters, cut this rope right here. There's probably other ways to do this, the professional way, anywhere you like. All right, but this is the way we're doing it. All right. Yeah, give it a good snip. Put it over there and two, one hand, give it a good squeeze. That's it all the way till it goes all the way. It didn't go a little bit more. Grab the rope and pull on it a bit while you do it with your other hand. That's it, beautiful. Now, pull this rope out. And now uh, this end, the other way, because it's got a knot in it. That's it, now it's out now. I'm holding this, otherwise it's gonna go no big deal. Right, now what we need to do is feed the other, we've got to work out the length actually, so let's do that. What we're gonna do, we're gonna lay all these old pieces down together, and then we're gonna get the new one and lay it next to it and go, yep, yeah, that's about the right length, close enough will do. So here we go, we've laid it down on the old carpet here. All right, you've got the old bit of cord and the new one. All right, unroll it a little bit more, let's give it a few extra inches. That's it, keep going, keep going. That's it. Where your thumb is there, just cut it, right? I reckon cut it right there. Give it a good snip all in one, right? Give it a nice... You don't have to rush it. That's it. That's beautiful. Okay, good. Now just snip it a bit more. Yeah, these things, they're not that good for cutting that. But hey, did the job, didn't it? All right, leave everything else there. Just bring the new cord right, back. So it's got to come through the hole there and straight into this bit here. And we're going to tie the knot here. So let's see how I go. You could get your flame and burn this little end off here so that you don't, but that would make it easy. And I'll, you know, we like a challenge. Let's see if we can do it like this, right? Shouldn't be that hard. This is, you know, the first time we've done this. This is old school fixing things that people need to learn how to do because one day people might need skills. Have a think about that. One day, the things you, a lot of people have not needed before in their lives, you know, the young generation, I tell you what, I don't know, I can't get this in there, but this is the whole point, right? So everybody can have a laugh and go, <laughs> look at this, right? Beautiful. All right, what we're going to do now is stop the camera. And I'll start it again while you tie that knot. Just make a loop, stick it through itself. And if we want to be really good, we could do two knots. Pull that nice and tight. It'll pull itself tight anyway. Yeah, slide it down. Put your, yeah, that's it. That's the one. Beautiful. Right, I don't think that's going to slip out that hole there, but we'll find out, won't we? And if everything went to plan, I did get the flame and just heat up that end and, you know, just save it getting messy. I don't think we've got too much uh, rope hanging out there, but beware you don't have too much. Right, Mitch, gently let it back in. Let's see if it all works in case the rope's the wrong size or this is just a general grunt, whatever. Oh, okay, so it's a bit long. Okay, people, here we go. Right, so this is what's happened. So we've got a little bit too much cord. Nothing wrong with that. We can either leave it hanging around or we just cut this end off. So better to go too long and have to retie this end twice than to end up too short. So there's a lesson for you. So we're going to have a look at this. Make sure it is... This might squash as well. So we're going to have a bit of a muck around with it and see how it turns out. But you get the gist of it. All right, so we've had a bit of a muck around. You're holding that tight. All right, so yeah, not tight enough. All right, let's angle it back to the right angle again. Here we go. All right, beautiful. All right, so... I've just slid the string up a little bit and we're just doing a bit of a test run off. So where it sort of comes back to, we're just going to tie another knot. I don't mind if it's a little bit hanging around, as long as it's not hanging all the way down and getting chopped off sort of thing. So we're going to tie a new knot just in here a little bit and then cut it off and use the little trade flame to, uh, you know, beautiful. Now, with a bit of a trim up, looks like we've got a 
new pool starter for a trip to Bunnings and three dollars eighty it was. Might have got a trade discount. I'm not sure. Perfect, mate. Beautiful one. Well, about perfect. But you know what? For four bucks, we save spending thousand bucks on a new lawnmower. Because if we're going to get one, it could be that ego that you get from. What tools shop? Trade tools in Queensland. I know someone got the ego. He's pretty happy with that. Big heavy duty thing, bit better compared to those Ryobi things that I'm gonna guess are five, six, seven hundred anyway. But anyway, I think that's the brand. But you know what? We've got a perfectly good one sitting here for four bucks, so we're gonna keep using it. Alright, get this one started. This one's lined up, so just get it started by hand. Get all three bolts started before you tighten any of them up. Beautiful, all fixed. And on this one, the governor springs broken, so it revs its little head off. So we're going to keep the oil changes up to it and keep the speed down low, but it's got a crazy amount of grunt because there's basically no governor. <laughs> no Woohoo! Yeah, baby! Stop it, people. Well, there's a couple of different ways. You can pull that up there, and you might be able to find the kill switch button that's just under on the carby there. Or it'll run out of fuel. So what I did, because we had this off the cover there, so I probably just had it a millimetre or two out. So I just loosened that off while it was still running and just adjusted the cable till it stopped. And now I've adjusted it, so if I give it a little bit of throttle, it should easily start, like it says, easy start. a video now we might as well add a little bit extra thanks mate to the video and say if you want to do an oil change on these well firstly you should check the oil level once they get old they can burn oil if you haven't maintained your air filter that sort of thing this is to fill it up from memory it's about 600 mil of oil you can actually drain it from there you take that off if it's always and drain it or you can go for the um, drain plug underneath probably just as easy to go right here does the same thing don't tip the mower to the exhaust side because it will put oil into the exhaust if you're not just doing an oil change. Don't tip it to the uh, this side because fuel will leak out and I think it can also put oil coming out this side as well, out your air filter. So don't do that. The best way to tip the mower is backwards like that, to be quite honest. But you can tip it to the exhaust side, like I said, if you're doing that oil change. And don't tip it forward either. Um, spark plug's pretty easy to change. Don't over tighten it. There it is there. You just carefully pop this off. And if you had to do that because... This one's nice and tight because it's mine. I've adjusted it so it doesn't come off when you get caught up in all the trees and bushes because that often, have you noticed that? You know, you hit a bit of a bush or a tree in the garden and it comes off. So what I do, I just give that a little squeeze, a bit of a rework. But there's your plug. Don't over tighten, it's the main thing. Right, nice and tight. Mine doesn't come off. There is a kill switch down under here. There's a little button, but you know, that could be a bit hard to get to, so don't worry about that. Your air filter, take out this flat blade here. And what, well, old school, we used to wash it in petrol put oil, soak it in oil, squeeze all the oil out and then put it back in the case. So, you know, you can wash it in soapy water. All depends how um, dirty it is, what cleaning product you want to use. I'm just saying old school, what we used to do, but ideally gloves, you don't want petrol on your hands. Petrol's pretty dangerous to work with. It is definitely a very old school idea. The primer here on these three pumps and away she goes. Well, it doesn't always work. Takes a while to get fuel through. There can be some problems with the carby and the gaskets under here. So you can get a gasket kit for that. But they are a really awesome, reliable mower. Basic maintenance, all changes, air filter, spark plugs, and should last you 30, 40 years, no problem, even forever, if you really look after it well, which to be quite honest, I don't. Why? Because it was free. So I think I'll put a spark plug in at once. I could probably have another one. But guess what? It's still working, isn't it? Anyway, I'll go cut the grass now. I'll cut the grass now. I cut it the other day with the other mower. It's much easier. It's a mulcher. It's just round. It's got no catch. It just drops the grass. It's got flat blades, it's beautiful. Um, obviously that's why grandfather, he loved it. Um, used to start it up with a drill. Anyway, that's another story. I didn't like that after I saw the drill get ripped off the extension lead and start spinning around, that wasn't really good. So uh, I said, I'm gonna put the pull starter back on top. That's the other mower. Anyway, if you learnt something, there's a few things to have a think about in this video. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you want, subscribe, turn the bell on. This is Full Before Diesel Sundays where we go completely off topic and you might learn something different. See ya.